Hello everyone. In this episode, we are going to discuss one specific subject. That subject is how to lay out input capacitors for a switch mode power supply. As we all know, when designing a switch mode power supply and you want to take EMC into consideration, then minimizing the hot loop is very important. For a step-down converter such as a buck converter, the hot loop is really defined um, as the input capacitor and the uh, switching stage. So how to choose the correct amount of capacitance and how to lay out the capacitors become critical for EMC design. And in this episode, because we only have limited amount of time, we're only focusing on the layout part of um, the subject, okay? And as usual, we're going to use a very practical demonstration, and we hope you enjoy this episode. So enjoy. Okay, so first let's have a look at the test setup. So remember, if you remember this uh, evaluation board, this is the board we use for demystify grounds issue for switch mode power supply. So if you missed that episode, check it out, okay? So this is a evaluation board from MPS, and um, you can see from this uh, PCB, they used the capacitors in a way that when you have current going through the main uh, DC bus, the current will go, um, if you look at these two capacitors here, for example, these are uh, relatively larger size capacitors, then the current will go opposite direction. Therefore, the benefits people claim is that you create a magnetic field that they cancel out each other. So hence this uh, this design. Uh, text instruments call this um, butterfly capacitor layout because it looks like a butterfly um, wings if you look at it. So yeah, um, so the first thing we wanted to do actually is to measure the noise current going through the capacitor to see whether they are uh, opposite direction as we would imagine. So how do we do that? Well, now we're trying to look at the current waveform and especially the current waveform going through the capacitor. If you've been watching our video, you will understand that the best way of measuring it is to use a magnetic field loop because when you have current going through the capacitor you can place the fuel loop next to it then due to the mutual coupling there will be a voltage waveform picked up by this loop okay so you can see um, we now have channel one and channel two and it's quite uh, important to to set this up correctly first you will see that we use two uh, loops right and if you look at the size of it actually the size are not really exactly the same and um, but we try to keep the length of the coaxial cable exactly the same length this is extremely important because now we're dealing with very high frequency high speed measurement if you're using different lengths of the coaxial cable that means the signal you pick up from the end and by the time it travels to the uh, oscilloscope you will have a slightly um, different phase shift between the two signals. So in this case, we try to keep the length, this transmission line length as close as possible, okay? And ideally, you would use two shielded uh, magnetic field loops because when we are trying to measure the current, these two loops are gonna have very close proximity to each other. Then of course, you want to avoid the effects between the two loops. So best is to use two shielded loops Whereas in this case, you can see we only have one. This one is a shielded magnetic field loop, whereas this one is an unshielded magnetic field loop. Okay, so that's so these are the things I need to point out just in case uh, people watching it and saying, oh, why you do this, right? So we know this is not enough, but okay, for this test. So let's have a look at the noise current going through the two capacitors. We note, we, we also discussed in the past that these probes have direction property, okay? So that means if the current going to one direction, they generate a positive voltage. And if the current is the other direction, then it's the voltage is the negative voltage. Therefore, you have uh, uh, this sort of, you can use this to determine the current direction in this sense, okay? So to do this test, let's uh, let's try it, okay? So I'm gonna power the, uh, the PCB, okay? So the PCB now is powered up. First, let's try to, make sure that we pick up uh, the signals uh, uh, correctly. Okay, so now I'm going to put both loops, right, on one capacitor on the 
on the test. So that would be this capacitor here. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Okay, now you see on the oscilloscope, you can see two waveforms, right? And you can see that despite the amplitude difference, they are in phase, okay? So this means the current travel in the same direction, travel in the same direction. So that makes sense, right? Because it, 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 this is a really small area where we measure the signals, and due to the measurement inaccuracy of the, you know, the location difference, so we can't pick up exactly the same signals. However, we do pick up currents that travel in the same direction, okay? So let's do it again. You see, they are pretty much the same direction. So now I'm going to move the one of the uh, probes so to the other uh, probe. Okay, now you see, now I'm measuring the current traveling on um, the two capacitors. What did you see on the screen? You can clearly see now that the current waveform is now out of phase, meaning the current actually is traveling opposite direction. So yeah, we can actually see the current going through these two capacitors. They are in opposite direction. Of course, the shape are not exactly the same because of the loop size difference. Um, but you know, it's important to see that they are out of phase. So yeah, so that means yeah, um, current does travel opposite directions when when they go through uh, these two capacitors. The same is true with the other two smaller O four O two capacitors. Okay, so that that is our first step to validate whether the current travel opposite directions on these capacitors, okay? So now you have seen the current distribution across the capacitors. Next step is we're gonna um, use a EMI receiver. We're gonna benchmark this as a conducting emission. Again, we're only looking at the conducting emission impact, okay? So we're gonna do a sweep from 150 kilohertz to about 110 megahertz conducting emission scanning based on this design. And we, what we are going to do next is to change this uh, capacitor to basically move this one close to this one. And um, a look at the smaller size 0402 is going to be very tricky to, to do. So I hope I'll do that as well. And also on this side, you can see there are uh, two capacitors on the filter design as well. So what we're going to do is, yeah, really just to change the three capacitor uh, location and we're gonna do a comparison, but we only focus on conducting emission, just to show you the impact, okay? Okay, so if you look at the change I made, so I swapped this capacitor and pla placed it there, and you can see I also sort of disordered this capacitor, this small capacitor, but due to the space constraint, I can only piggyback on the other capacitor, you probably can see it on the back, um, yeah, simply puts these two capacitors like this, okay? Not the best way of layout, but just really want to prove the concept. So now I made the change and I'm gonna place in the TEM cell and uh, do a comparison. This is the comparison results. Um, it's a peak scanning automotive, so from 150 kilohertz all the way to about 110 megahertz, that's, that's here, okay? So the uh, red trace is the new results, okay? So that's after we modify the PCB, where the green one is the old results. So you can see peak new and peak, okay? So yeah, you can see that definitely by changing the capacitor layout, we increase the emissions. Now, in this region, I'm not sure, so sure whether it is really due to the capacitor layout difference, or it could be, you know, when we set up the, uh, the test, you can never guarantee you set up 100% the same. So perhaps it's due to the cable layout that caused uh, more you know, uh, uh, difference here. But I would say that if you look at here, the, the, the region here, it looks like by having a better capacitor layout, this sort of uh, butterfly uh, layout, you can reduce the noise by at least one or two dB, I would give credit, okay? Um, but of course, you know, I have to be very careful with my words here, because if you look at the, uh, the modification we made, I mean, I mean here is pretty okay, right? The way I lay out these two capacitors, but this this piggyback O four O two capacitor here, for example, would significantly reduce the capacitor of the top one because of the uh, you know the inductance introduced. So in 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 a real life PCB design, you probably would not do this. So that perhaps do contribute to, to the noise increasing here, for example, and also 
uh, on this side, you know, you would never do a capacitor layout like this. Uh, now having two capacitors exactly the same value, layout is ex extremely important, and this has been pointed out in Dr. Hubin's book, and I think I will dedicate a separate episode to do a talk on this. But yeah, when placing two capacitors of the same value, sometimes issues could happen. So yeah, I mean, this is just really just to show you uh, some good practice, really, of capacitor layout. So we hope you enjoy this episode. Okay, see you next time.